Georgia Senator, newly elected Senator, Rafael Warnock. I mean, he said a piece out there in, on the floor of the Senate that everybody needs to listen. And I tell you something, listen to his words. If after having the majority of the Senate, well, again, 50-50 plus the Vice President, if we don't accomplish the things that we need to, specifically going forward, uh, build back better as well as voter rights, in other words, making sure that we protect against voter suppression, etc., we really don't deserve to have leadership. If we allow the minority party to get their will against the will of the American people, why should the American people put us there? I want you to listen to Warnock, and then we'll take it on the other side. One that lies at the foundation of our democracy, and time and time again, because of a lack of good faith engagement, the rules of the Senate have prevented us from moving that conversation forward. We could not imagine. We could not imagine changing the rules. That is until last week, because last week we did exactly that. Be very clear, last week we changed the rules of the Senate to address another important issue, the economy. This is a step, a change in the Senate rules we haven't been willing to take to save our broken democracy, but one that a bipartisan majority of this chamber thought was necessary in order to keep our economy strong. We changed the rules to protect full faith and credit of the United States government. We've decided we must do it for the economy, but not for the democracy. So Madam President, I will be honest. This has been a difficult week for me as I've pondered how am I going to vote on this debt ceiling question we're about to take. I feel like I'm being asked to take a road that is a point of moral dissonance for me. Because while I deeply believe that both our democracy and our economy are important, I believe that it is misplaced to change the Senate rules only for the benefit of the economy when the warning lights on our democracy are flashing at the same time. In light of the conniving methods of voter suppression we have seen enacted into law since the January 6th attack on the Capitol, I come to the floor today to share with the people of Georgia and the American people the message that I shared with my colleagues over the weekend and earlier today during our caucus meeting. I said to my Democratic colleagues over the last several days, number one, unfortunately, the vast majority of our Republican friends have made it clear that they have no intention of trying to work with us to address voter suppression or to protect voting rights. We cannot let our Republican friends off the hook for not being equitable governing partners. If we are serious about protecting the right to vote that's under assault right now, here is the truth. It will fall to Democrats to do it. And if Democrats alone must raise the debt ceiling, then Democrats alone must raise and repair the ceiling of our democracy. How do we in good conscience justify doing one and not the other? Some of my Democratic colleagues are saying, but what about, what about bipartisanship? Isn't that important? I say, of course it is. But here's the thing we must remember. Slavery was bipartisan. Jim Crow segregation was bipartisan. The refusal of women's suffrage was bipartisan. The denial of the basic dignity of members of the LGBTQ community has long been bipartisan. The three-fifths compromise was the creation of a putative national unity at the expense of black people's basic humanity. So when colleagues in this chamber talk to me about bipartisanship, which I believe in, I just have to ask at whose expense? Who is being asked to foot the bill for this bipartisanship? And is liberty itself the cost? I submit that that's a price too high and a bridge too far. To my Democratic colleagues, I say while it is deeply unfortunate, it is more than apparent that it has been left to us to handle alone the task of safeguarding our democracy. The judgment of history is upon us. Is that prescient or not? Yes, we would love to have bipartisanship. But bipartisanship is not really the answer. And as he points out, remember, slavery was bipartisanship, was bipartisan. Remember, anti-woman legislation was bipartisan. Remember, the three-fifths compromise wasn't bipartisan. It was the inception of the country. So there is no inherent virtue in having bipartisanship when said virtue creates evil. So let's again 
let's again to all our brothers and sisters that are Democrats or for any a, a Republican that wants to join in, do the right thing. Kill the filibuster and get the job of the American people done. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.